We deeply apologize for the greater anxiety caused by the accident at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, which continues to affect residents near the power station and the broader society. We recognize that bringing the contaminated water under control is the most urgent and serious problem that we must address. And we are tackling this by implementing not only emergency measures, but also fundamental countermeasures. Supported by the Japanese government and utilizing the immense amount of expertise provided by professionals around the world, all of us at TEPCO will strive relentlessly to control the contaminated water. With regard to the impact of radioactive materials, we monitor radiation levels at various points and disclose the results of this monitoring operation. We believe that the impact on the surrounding waters is limited to the area within the port of the power plant, kilometer offshore. There has been no impact on the water or the wider ocean. We will continue to announce all relevant information in a timely and proper manner. Yesterday, officials in Japan announced that radiation levels around tanks storing contaminated water at the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant have reached a new high. The alarming new levels are high enough to provide a lethal dose of radiation within hours to someone standing near contaminated areas without protective gear. Meanwhile, the Japanese government also announced plans yesterday to spend upwards of $470 million on a subterranean ice wall in a desperate move to stop further leaks of radioactive water from the stricken nuclear power plants. Japanese Prime, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said that instead of leaving this up to TEPCO, the government will step forward and take charge. The ice wall would freeze the ground to a depth of up to 100 feet through a system of pipes carrying a coolant as cold as 40 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. This would prevent contaminated water from escaping from the stricken plant's immediate surroundings. It would also keep underground water from entering the reactor and turbine buildings where much of that radioactive water is collected. Ice walls have been used before to deal with radioactive materials, most notably by the U.S. Department of Energy at the former Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee. But many people are skeptical of the Japanese government's plans. They argue that the sheer operating costs of the ice wall could prove to be too much of a burden. With Japan now scrambling to find ways to prevent even more destruction and devastation from the Fukushima nuclear disaster, it should be pretty clear that the time to say no more to nuclear power is now. The people trying to bring the Olympics to Tokyo find themselves answering question after question about the leaks. On Saturday, the International Olympic Committee will choose the host city for the Games in 2020. We in Japan have witnessed the significant role athletes and sports can play in society. Now we are determined to share the inspiration and promote the Olympic values for young people around the world. Members of the Tokyo Big Committee held a news conference in Buenos Aires ahead of the IOC meeting. Reporters asked six questions. Four of them were about the safety of Tokyo. The situation in Fukushima. Fukushima's radiation. I'd like to assure you that there is no risk like the one you might imagine in Tokyo. Takeda said radiation levels in Tokyo are the same as those in any other city in the world. Officials at the Tokyo Electric Power Company have warned of a potential new problem at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They say radioactive water that leaked from a storage tank last month have, uh, or may have merged with groundwater. TEPCO says it collected samples of groundwater from a monitoring well about 10 meters from the faulty tank. Tests showed the water contained high levels of radioactive substances. Last month, TEPCO discovered more than 300 tons of contaminated water had leaked from the tank. Company officials said some of that water may have reached the sea. A steam leak was reported at another one of Japan's nuclear plants on Thursday, but it contained no radioactive substances. 
The OE nuclear plant is located in Fukui Prefecture. The Kansai Electric Power Company says an employee accidentally opened a valve that sent steam bursting out. Witnesses say it was as high as three meters. Twenty workers were evacuated and no one was hurt. The reactor was shut down for regular safety inspections two days ago. It had been one of only two online reactors in the country. Japan's top nuclear regulator says she's convinced a nuclear plant in northeastern Japan stands on active faults. Investigators with the Nuclear Regulation Authority have just wrapped up a second survey of the Higashidori plant. Agency Commissioner Kunihiko Shimazaki spoke after the team finished its work. Investigators focused on a trench dug along one of the faults. They conducted a similar study late last year. A draft report released in February says two faults beneath the plant appear to be active. Tohoku Electric Power Company operates the facility. Officials there are challenging the agency's findings. They've launched their own investigation. Engineers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are preparing to test a government plan to contain leaks of radioactive water. They're going to create a frozen wall of soil underground. Officials estimate about 400 tons of groundwater flows in every day. The water becomes contaminated once inside the reactor buildings. Japanese leaders have committed $320 million to help keep it out. The people at Tokyo Electric Power Company released video for the first time of groundwater flowing into a turbine building. Engineers will use a small plot of land near the reactors for the test. They'll drive steel pipes 30 meters into the ground. Then they'll pump in a liquid chemical at minus 40 degrees Celsius to freeze the soil and create a wall. They're planning to start in mid-October. They'll see if the wall works and how to maintain it. Leaders are hoping the full wall can be in place by March 2015. Researchers at two Japanese universities are testing an idea they hope will revolutionize the way we grow vegetables. They're developing what they say are efficient, sustainable factories that can fit anywhere from a parking lot to a home. Researchers at Chiba University are taking a great interest in the development of vegetable factories. They've devoted about a hectare of their campus to an experimental indoor farm. They produce 3,000 heads of lettuce a day there. Computers control all the lighting, nutrition, and carbon dioxide. It makes production more stable and efficient. We can produce vegetables about 100 times more efficiently than on an outdoor farm. That is an effective way for the future. The researchers are testing their ideas off campus, too. They've installed many factories in people's homes. This one produces about 10 types of produce, including lettuce and mint. The researchers worked with an electronics maker, a real estate developer, and a hydroponics specialist to produce the appliances. The people behind the project have set up a website for trial users. They can upload information such as how well vegetables are growing or ideas for recipes. And they can take pictures with a built-in camera, showing them to farming experts and asking for advice. We're in the test phase right now, but we hope it'll become a standard appliance. Scientists at another university believe vegetable factories can have therapeutic value. In April, researchers at the University of Tokyo set up a small factory in the grounds of a housing complex. They asked local retirees to look after the day-to-day -day production. The factory produces four kinds of leafy vegetables, including lettuce and potherb mustard. Workers vary the levels of lighting and nutrition to try to find the most efficient growing conditions. Growing vegetables energizes me. With minimal manual labor and temperatures kept at a cool 20 degrees Celsius, it's a lot easier than tilling the fields. Toshio Nakamura joined the project after retiring from a major electronics manufacturer. He says he wanted to try something new. He uses expertise from his old career, collecting and analyzing data to see how different conditions affect growth. It's fun to grow vegetables and think about factors like carbon dioxide levels. When he returns home, he compiles the results and sends them to the university. It's great to have somewhere I can put my skills to good use. Universities and corporations are pouring time and money into developing these high-tech farming systems. They believe one day soon, vegetable factories will be a common sight in city centers or even in our living rooms.